Okay, so here we are. Um, it's Get Your Rock Out here with El Nino. Why didn't you say a little bit about yourself? My name is Aru Luster. I'm the lead guitar player for El Nino. Brilliant. And so you guys, uh, you released a new album a few months ago. How do you think that one's been received? Well, the main thing that we wanted to do with this record is um, we felt that um, when, the f when the band first came out and put out uh, Revolution, the fans were really um, attracted to the band because of the raw energy. Um, I mean, it was just like from start to finish, it was just like a heavy record and it was an energetic record. And then kind of along the way, we started getting more experimental and started uh, trying to uh, maybe overthink things a little bit. So with this record, we kind of wanted to go back to our roots. We didn't want to make the same record again, but at the same time, we wanted to have that raw energy and that kind of spontaneous energy and that, that heaviness that the, the first record did. So um, when we got together, we, you know, we jammed as a band. I mean, for the past couple of records, we weren't actually playing together that much. We were just like writing and sending ideas across the internet, basically. But we got, you know, we basically got in a studio and jammed together and, and put together like a heavy record that we thought the fans would love. And so far, the response has been overwhelming from the fans and they've really um, kind of, this record is very dear to them and this record was meant for them. Brilliant. And so do you think it's going to go a long way in attracting a new fan base as well as pleasing your current fans? Um, I, I mean, it, I mean, it, that wasn't, you know, our, our goal was mainly to, to um, make something that El Nino fans would love. And hopefully by doing that, we will be able to attract some new fans as well. But attracting the new fans wasn't the the foremost thought in our mind when we when we made this record so obviously you know we are here at hammerfest apart from playing what's your highlight gonna be uh definitely not the food <laughs> 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 um you know just meeting new bands i want to check out some of the, the you know the the young new bands that are from the uk that are a lot of the thrash bands i mean, I mean i'm from the old school thrash from the Bay Area, you know, I kind of grew up in that scene. Um, so, and I'm glad to see that it came back and a lot of bands are like, you know, kind of picking up where that scene left off. And and I, I really welcome it. Like, you know, some people may be bitter, like, oh, these bands are trying to do what, uh, you know, bands did in the past. But I, I, I don't know, I, I really like the idea and I, and I want to check out some of the, the young bands that I haven't seen yet. I mean, there are quite a lot of people nowadays saying that actually all the up-and-coming bands are crap. How far do you agree with that? I mean, there, you know, there's... With, with any time in history, there's a few bands that are kind of breaking new ground and doing new and interesting things, and then there's a bunch of bands that are crap. So, I mean, it's the same as it is now, as it was 10 years ago, as it was 10 years before that. You know, there's a couple great bands that are going to still remain 10 years from now, and then probably 99% of them are just going to, you know, be working in car washes and, and, you know, donut stands or whatever. So if you had to pick a band, like a new band that you've seen or heard lately that you think, you know, has the potential to make it huge, who would you put your money on? Um, Not to put you on the spot, all right? Yeah. <laughs> To, to ha make it huge or have longevity. Um, I know, you know, I mean, I'm, I know Lamb of God isn't a new band by any stretch, but, you know, I, I see them being the slayer of, you know, 10 years from now and, and kind of following along what Slayer's done. Slayer's been around for 30 years, and, you know, they're my favorite band of all times. And I can see Lamb of God kind of being the, the you know this generation's slayer um i like suicide silence um i i recently we just did uh sound wars i mean that's sound wars is actually uh chris and laza studio we did a uh, sound wave in australia and we were you know there was iron maiden was headlining um slayer was playing demu um 
just tons and tons of cool bands. But one band stuck out, and they really, you know, I, I had never heard of the band until uh, Soundwaves, but uh, Bring Me the Horizon. Yeah, they were like, uh, they were really amazing. Brilliant. And so, you know, you've been playing for quite a while now. If you had to choose the favorite show you've ever played, highlight of the career, what would it be? Um, I would have to name at least five shows, you know. <laughs> I mean, okay, you can have top five. <laughs> uh, one of them was we uh, recently, about a year and a half ago, we played Moscow for the first time. That was an amazing show. Um, Mexico City, um, maybe about four years ago, was an amazing show. It was like we played at a soccer stadium and. The first time I played uh, Brixton Academy with uh, Machine Head, you know, that was an amazing show. Um, Bulgaria, we played a great show in Bulgaria about two years ago, maybe three years ago. Um, and one of the, I would probably, I would say one of the Australian shows. We do really well there as well, and uh, that was awesome. <laughs> so do you still get the same buzz from performing now that you did when you first started? Yes. <laughs> I mean, not for every show, obviously. But every once in a while, one of those shows comes up that um, it doesn't matter how long I've been doing it and or how, you know, any anything else, but it, I'm just in the moment and it's 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 uh totally real and um you know and and we you know what when that stops then that's probably time to stop playing music but as long as there's still new experiences and you know that type of stuff it's it's great so have you got any shows that stand out maybe from when you were starting up that were just awful awful yeah stand out in the memory for being terrible yeah. Uh, I remember, th I mean, this, w this wasn't actually when I was in El Nino, it was when I was in Machine Head, but we played um, one of the German metal festivals, I can't remember the name of it at that time, but for the entire set, except for the last two songs, my, I, I couldn't get my guitar amp working, and it was just, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Not good. Not no. good. And my, my tech couldn't figure out what was wrong, and we just couldn't get it working, and, and it was... Uh, it was awful. <laughs> I can imagine. Right, okay. The most embarrassing song you've got on, you know, your iPod. On my iPod. I actually don't keep any music on my iPod. It's all it's all TV shows. <laughs> okay, then the most embarrassing song you own. The most embarrassing song that I own. Well, if I were to die and somebody saw this song in my collection, they would probably, you know, I don't know what they would think, but the only reason I have this is for a joke. You know, it's like, yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think I have um, YMCA by the village people, <laughs> but it's not because I, you know, I put it on in, in my room by myself and dance around or anything Blatantly, like that. Blatantly, obviously do that. So. So. Brilliant. Well, thank you so, so much for your time today. It's been an utter pleasure. And have thank a you. cracking weekend. Right on, you too. Thank you.